everyone as you can see here I have an Amiga 500 and it is extremely yellow as you can see look at those keys look at that plastic it's really bad if you just turn it here you can see the difference in the color so I'm going to make an attempt at uh, retro brighting it I've never done it before but I've seen some videos and seen some guides online and I'm gonna apply paste over it, put clean film on, and put it under, uh, put it in a basket with tin foil and a UV light for several hours and see where we go. So let's get to it. So here's a few of the items that you're gonna need to actually achieve the retro writing process. You're gonna need a screwdriver with some different heads because there's different screw uh, types well, at least on my Amiga, so I need to uh, use different ones to un undo it. Um, we're going to need uh, one shot cream peroxide. Uh, I got this off Amazon for about £3 a bottle. It's uh, salon bleach hair stuff. I don't really know exactly what it is, but uh, it's 12% and 40 volume, and apparently that's the one that you need to be able to actually. Uh, get a good um, clean Amiga again uh, so you need that uh, this is a cream so you're gonna have to paste it over the Amiga uh, and to do that you're gonna need a paintbrush to dab it all over once the cream has been placed on the Amiga uh, you're going to need to put a uh, clean film wrap that around it uh, um, to help protect uh, the the moisture in there so it's deeps into the uh, the Amiga plastic itself um, and then for the keys uh, you're going to have to pop them off and then you need a plastic zip lock bag um, you know place the keys in there and then you're going to fill it with uh, hydrogen peroxide liquid um, and this is also 12% and I've got a 500 mil bowl here uh, this cost me about £15 off Amazon. So once you've popped all the keys off, you pop them into the bag and you pour this in, uh, seal it up and then put it under the UV light with the Amiga. And then apparently that also uh, does the trick with the keys. So I'm going to give this a try. So the last thing that we also need to use uh, for the retro writing, which is probably the most important part, is the UV light. Now you could do it outside if you want, but being this is in the UK, sun is never here. So um, I just bought myself a UV light off Amazon for about £17, I think it was. And it just has your standard uh, plug. I've placed it into a old washing basket. I uh, just stuck it using uh, No More Nails uh, tape. I put two on the back and stuck that to the bottom of the basket. And I've uh, put around tin foil around the side so the theory is once that's um, placed on top of the Amiga the light shining down it, it bounces around but uh, reflects back off onto the Amiga so you get a more even um, plane over the Amiga itself uh, to hopefully not get uh, any blotches or areas where it doesn't doesn't happen so I'll just show you how it looks just in there Nice and simple. You place this on top of the Amiga and leave it there for several hours, I guess. Uh, checking every few hours. So let's uh, let's give this a try. So on the Amiga itself, uh, there's three screws uh, along here, although I'm actually missing one there for some reason. Um, and there's a few screws here and then there's three screw screws here. Uh, once they're taken off, uh, it all just comes apart basically so um, I'll just give uh, undo this and then we'll, we'll see the inside so once those uh, six screws are out around the side you can remove the top place this to the side then in here we have the keyboard which just lifts up and then there's a little connection here you just remove that off the pins Then you've got the floppy drive here, and there's um, the power connection, which just comes away, and then the IDE cable just pops off as well. 
Then there's a screw here uh, to remove. You have to take that out so you can move that. And then there's two two screws that you can adjust underneath, uh, just here and here, so you can remove the floppy drive. And then after that, there's a couple of screws around on the motherboard, so you can remove that as well. So once you've uh, unhooked the uh, floppy drive. Um, there's a few screws around on the motherboard. Uh, this little bit here just comes away. And then you can just pop out the motherboard itself. And then you're just left with the plastic. The side bit here comes off and the little bit expansion bay slot also comes away. And then you're just left with the shell. So what's next is I'm gonna give it a clean a bit of a clean up, uh, wash it down. So that's all cleaned up now. Next is the keyboard. We need to take all the keys off uh, the board itself. Um, just use a flat screwdriver and just push them off. Now, I've never done this before, so hopefully it did not go wrong. So I've now taken all the keys off the keyboard and I put them into two bags and the space bar into one bag because it's quite big. Um, when you're doing the keyboard, uh, you'll notice that there's some um, metal bars that uh, clip into the keys they're for the larger ones to help them uh, stay secure on there so um, you have to pop them out the side to get them off so they're they're a little tricky but everything else is just pop off and it's really easy right this part is putting on the cream so as you can see I've got the front the front uh, top cover here uh, that's the inside you can see the color there so hopefully we're going to achieve that color again compared to this horrible color so put a bit of cardboard down on my table and I have my paintbrush uh, clean film and the uh, cream so all right there goes nothing I'm not sure how much I'm gonna to have to put on but gonna put it there oh and the uh, logo just here I put a bit of tape over it so um, that doesn't get damaged um, I've seen some people that have left it and it's faded so um, I don't want that to happen <sighs> I really have no idea how much to put on on videos where everyone just clumps it on so I just want to make sure it gets everywhere right I'm gonna leave it with that see how that goes on that was about half the bottle I used there now I'm gonna put the clean film on and wrap it round. Right, that's all in, and uh, that'll be ready to put under the light. Okay, so next um, is the keys, and you're going to be using the hydrogen peroxide in the bags so I'm not going to put too much in here just a little to uh, fill it up right 
So I've got the keys underneath there because I've run out of space, so hopefully it will get them all in there, but we'll see what happens there. But the main thing I want this doing, so I can always do this again later. So, if I, uh, next thing to do is I've just plugged in the light and I've just powered it on. Um, so if you can see that, but now I'm going to put this over and check it in about an hour's time. So this is what it looks like at the moment. Uh, it's been about two hours in there. Nothing really seems to have started to happen on it yet. Um, I'm not sure why, but I was having problems with the uh, fluorescent light. The uh, it got so hot that the uh, known more nail thing melted and it actually fell down. So I've just put some metal bars in to keep it uh, holstered up at the moment. I tried with some sellotape, but that did not work. So I'm going to uh, put it in for a few more hours and see what happens. Right, I've taken it out after seven and a half hours of it being in there and uh, it's made it a little lighter but it's still pretty strong coloured yellow especially around the sides the uh, the keys though not much has really happened here underneath seems to have cleaned up really well but a lot of them are still quite yellow but you can see with the space bar it's definitely made had an effect just not as much as one I'd like so I think in the morning I might apply some more and leave it out in the sun for a while so I've now completed it it's had about 14 hours worth of uh, UV I've uh, coated it twice I did the keys in the cream as well for a uh, second time unfortunately I uh, lost one of them and uh, broke the other so I need to get a couple of uh, keys to replace them uh, the results not too bad really the uh, it's still yellow but it's not as bad as it was um, I'll show a comparison on there. Uh, I might do it again. I don't know. I might just buy a new one. But it's a project I've been wanting to do for a while. And I'd uh, probably do a couple of things differently. I would um, definitely uh, rehouse the uh, UV light. That was just a complete and utter disaster. Um, I ended up getting some... Um, uh, paint rollers for the wall just using the bars and shoving them in between to keep the uh, light up over it uh, not great it's not too bad around the edges the edges have uh, cleaned up pretty nice uh, I enjoy doing it it just takes a long long time and unfortunately I think mine was just so bad that I wasn't going to get anywhere really but I'd like to uh, uh, have your thoughts and opinions um, where did they go wrong on areas, where, where could they improve on areas and how have you got on with your retro writing, have you had mixed results this is the first time I've ever done it I'm, I'm fairly happy of how far it, it came obviously I would have liked it to restore it completely to how it was but unfortunately not anyway let me know how you uh, how you got on with yours